So here is the quickest presentation of symbolic logic that I know how to give. Uh, we start off with the notion of a proposition. Uh, a proposition is just a sentence that can be true or false, and so it is distinguished from uh, expressions like uh, exclamations, which are like yay, uh, those can't be true or false. You can have uh, sentences that are simply yes, uh, that's not a proposition. It may be shorthand for a proposition because it may sort of stand as shorthand for yes, such and such is the case, and that may be a true or false sentence, but it's not determinately true or false, and so we don't count that as a proposition. We only, we only count as propositions those things which have a fully specified truth value. Um, and uh, so in symbolic logic, we want to have a symbol for the proposition, and, and so we standardly make that symbol P. Um, and, uh, and this P acts like an X does in mathematics. It ranges over a set. Uh, here the set is the set of all propositions. So, so we can take this P to represent any proposition. Uh, just like in mathematics, we can take X to in a sense represent any real number or integer or whatever x ranges over. So uh, so here we have p, it's called a propositional variable, it could be any proposition, and it has one of two truth values, true or false. Uh, graphically we notate it as a table like this. Uh, that just means that there are two possible truth values for this proposition, one true, one false. Uh, and then we can, we can also talk about having multiple uh, propositional variables, so usually we go in order, P, Q, R, uh, So we, uh, when, when we do the table for this, we want to have the set of all permutations of true and false. Uh, because since we're leaving the case general, we're not specifying a particular proposition, we want to talk about uh, what is the case when each of them are true. We want to talk about what is the case when each of them are false. That's at the bottom. And, uh, and then in between, there's the case where one is true, the other is false, the first is false, the other is true. Um, and so this represents, you can, you can think of each row as uh, sort of a possible world. That's a common way of talking about this these days. Um, and so it, uh, it represents all possible worlds uh, relative to these two propositions. And you can see that a general way to generate truth tables for any number of uh, propositional variables is to just, uh, you know, start with the list of truth values under P and do half of them true and half of them false. And then for uh, Q, the you go a quarter of the way true and then a quarter of the way false and a quarter true and a quarter false. And if you have an R, then you go one eighth true, one eighth false, and you alternate like that. And eventually you'll get every permutation. Um, I won't bother proving it. It, uh, it's something that's more amenable to a proof in something like, I don't know, number theory. Um, but it's true, and so this is how you do it. Um, and so, uh, well, what does this, uh, what does this mean um, when we have a truth table like this? Well, we can imagine, let, let's say that P stands for the proposition that it's raining outside. And that's something that's true or false, and not both, and not neither. Uh, and we can take Q to represent the statement that the Republican won the office. Um, and so the first row represents the state of affairs where it is in fact raining outside, and the Republican did in fact win office, and the second row represents where it's raining and the Republican did not win, 
uh, third line, it's not raining, and the Republican did win, and last line uh, is obvious. Uh, so um, that's essentially what this truth table represents. And uh, so now we want to talk about not just uh, propositions, but what we call uh, uh, truth functional connectives. And standardly, we talk about five of them to start off there. There are really, you know, in a sense, two that are the most important, and that's negation and conjunction. So negation we generally represent as a tilde uh, put on the left side of a proposition. So uh, so we would read this as not P, or, uh, you know, if you take P to be the proposition that it's raining outside, then to say not it's raining outside is not grammatical English. So it, it doesn't translate perfectly into English, but you can either be a little bit creative and wiggle the word not into the sentence somehow so that it becomes grammatical English, like it's not raining outside, or um, as a, a slightly more algorithmic way of uh, considering the tilde, we, we can think of it as saying it is not the case that, or the following sense is, sentence is false. Um, that's a, a more sort of algorithmic way of reading the tilde, and it always preserves grammar in English as long as P is a well-formed English sentence, and we require that it must be so that, it's, uh, that it has determinate true and false values. Um, so, um, what does the truth table for not P look like? Well, uh, we can go ahead and reiterate uh, what the truth table for just P looks like. It's pretty obvious. It's just true and false, and if you negate or you deny a true sentence, then you are making a false statement. Uh, if someone says it's raining outside and you say no it's not, and in fact it is raining outside, then you said something false. So uh, the tilde takes a true truth value and switches it to false, and uh, likewise for the same reason it takes false and makes it true, so the truth table for not P is uh, just the opposite of the truth values, and um, that's really all there is to negation, and then there is conjunction. Well, well, negation is what's called a unary operator. It only operates on one thing. Uh, conjunction takes two propositions and puts them together to form a new proposition. Uh, so if we have P and Q, Here is P and Q. Um, I've just reiterated the truth values or the truth table for P and Q by themselves, and then I reiterated underneath P the truth values for P in each of these so-called possible worlds, and then I did the same for Q. And now we want to consider the word and. Um, well, what what does and mean in most contexts in English? Uh, arguably in all contexts, it means that you take uh, one sentence and only consider the uh, cases where it is true, and another sentence only consider the case where it's true, and then find where they meet. So, so it means that P is true and Q is true. So neither can be false, is another way of thinking about it. <coughs> and so when we look at